Hi guys, I hope you guys are enjoying our series where we repurpose Ramadan dishes so far. Yeah, today what I'm going to show you is how to repurpose kuah lontong ataupun kuah lode, yeah, as you know it. Lontong is always served together with uh, nasi impet or ketupat. I've already shown you how to repurpose ketupat into something that's super delicious. The link's right here if you want to check it out. Today, I'm going to show you how to repurpose kuah lode. All right. Now, what we're going to need is kuih tiao. I'm going to be making something that I came up with that's called lantong. All right. It's actually taking latna and lontong and combining it together. So, lantong. Yeah, it sounds like a cuss word, but it's all right. So, this is fresh kuih tiao. And what I'm going to do is gently just loosen up this kuih tiao. It will make it easier for us to fry it later on. Yeah. And one tip about storing kuih tiao is never store it in the fridge because what happens is kuih tiao is laced with a lot of oil. When you store it in the fridge, it becomes clumpy and then when you want to cook it, it gets all, you know, it's hard to get them apart. So because it is laced with oil, it actually has a longer shelf life. So keep it outside, it can last you for about a good week, yeah, outside. And to be honest, if you're going to buy kuih tiao and keep it longer than a week, that's just poor decision making in meal preps. Okay, so there we go. It's nice and loose. Now we're gonna heat up the wok. All right, now that the wok is smoking hot, we're gonna add in our oil. Once the oil is in, crack an egg. Using a ladle, stir around the egg. There we go. Kuei goes in. Once we've added the kuih we're going to add in a couple of sauces. Our dark soy sauce and regular soy sauce. Swirl, toss. What we're trying to do here is we're trying to char that kuih to get that nice aromatic flavour. So because we're doing it in a home-style stove, yeah, which is not high pressure. What we want to do is don't stir it too much because you don't want the kuih to break up. Yeah, we just want to get that nice char. So leave it uh, one side, let it sear nicely at the bottom and then we'll flip it over. Flip it around, nice. Yeah, this will take a good five to six minutes. Nice. You can see the surface of the kuih is starting to char up and that's exactly what we want. Now we remove a serving portion and the rest can be kept for a different portion to be served later on. All right, so now what we're going to do next is we're going to cut up a couple of garlic. A couple of cloves garlic, smash, mince. Now the reason for the garlic is really just to lift up the flavor of the dish. Yeah. There we go. And chili padi. Because I love my food spicy, so I'm going to be adding two. Bird's eye chili. Slice. Nice. Turn the wok back on again. Now we're going to fry up the garlic and the chili padi before we put in this beautiful lode yang from the fridge. All right, so now heat up the wok and add in some oil. There we go, garlic goes in. You want to get this garlic nice and golden. Once you add this garlic in and it starts to sizzle, you can smell the delicious smell of garlic. Now this is the part where you want to add chicken, you can add fish cakes, you can add prawns, literally anything else you want to add in, you can. Now chili goes in, beautiful. Now our kwa goes in. And all that's left to do is to bring it up to a boil, heat it up really nicely, and then we can serve it. Check the seasoning, and then you can serve it. Now, this is the part where if your lontong is too thin, yeah, that means the chai is hangat, this is the time where you can add in some tapong ubi or either uh, tapioca starch mixed together with a little bit of water, yeah, to thicken up your lontong so that it has the consistency of latna. There we go, nice. Give it a little taste. Delicious. Now, turn the heat off and now we're ready to serve. There we go. Nice. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is done. 
time for a little taste. Mix it up together. There we go, nice. Ladies and gentlemen, it's good. I mean, great there when you fry it, you get that nice char. You put anything gravy on top of it that is tasty, you're gonna get a dish that you're gonna be very, very happy with. Oh, it's so good. And you can add shrimps to it, like I said, you can add chicken to it, um, you can add squids to it, fish cake, anything you like, basically. It's gonna taste amazing. Right, now we're done with this lantong dish. Let's move on to what we can do with leftover sambal prawns patai. All right, so for the second repurposing dish, we've got this really nice sambal udang patai. Yeah, so what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna make a beautiful sambal udang patai pasta. Okay, I have here a pot of water that's been boiling away, that's already seasoned with enough salt. What I'm gonna do is take a bunch of pasta, we're going to drop it into the pot and let it cook away. Now, after that, we're going to slice up some garlic. So, it's very similar to an aglio olio, okay, um, but an Asian version of an aglio olio. Slice up your garlic and we're going to slice up some additional bird's eye chili. Because I love my dish spicy, so I'm gonna add on additional two bird's eye chili. All right, now we heat up our wok. And because this is an um, Asian version of an aglio olio, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use regular oil instead of your usual olive oil. And turn your heat to a low heat and add in your garlic. You can add it into a cool oil or a cool wok. Yeah, it doesn't matter because we want to take this garlic nice and slow to get it nice and crispy. You want to give your pasta a little stir so they don't stick together. Now always remember, cook it to the time that's stated on the packaging of the pasta. Alright, now that you see the garlic is nice and golden, we're going to add in our chilies. There we go. Now the pasta is done, turn off the heat. What we're going to do is, we're just going to transfer this pasta into the wok. Nice. Now you can crank up the heat, give it a toss around. There we go. Nice. And now we're going to be adding in our sambal udang patai. There we go. Nice. Now, a thing to note is, once you've added in your sambal, yeah, you do not want to overcook it because the prawns are already cooked. Yeah, so if you cook it for too long, what's going to happen is you're going to overcook that prawn and you're going to be left with something that's not nice. So give it a quick toss around. What we're really trying to do is just reheat the prawns. Yeah, now because this is an Asian version of an aglio olio, I will be using coriander instead of the regular parsley. So I have a bunch of coriander here, just rough chop it. There we go, pick it up and into the wok. There we go, nice. Turn off the heat, give it a quick taste. Oh, it smells amazing. Mm. It doesn't need extra seasoning because we've cooked the pasta with enough salt water and the sambal udang already has seasoning on its own. You put them together, it's something that's perfect. Now you pick up some of that prawn, get some of that patai. All right, now we've got a little bit of rocket. There's something about rocket and that sambal flavor. The rocket just cuts through that sambal flavor because it is rich, it is oily. 
That's how Samba Udang Patai is, is usually so that rocket will cut through that oil to make it a real nice balance. Place a little bit of rocket up top. Alright, and there you have it guys, a really nice Sambal Udang Petai Pasta. <sighs> Smell this, it's just amazing. Alright, so now time for a taste test. Get the prawn. absolutely delicious. I mean, you get the flavor from the sambal, but then it's sort of like an aglio olio at the same time, and you have it together, together with the rocket. The rocket plays such an important role in the dish. Now, if you do not have rocket, don't worry about it. You can add stuff like fresh onions, or a nice bunch of coriander on the top, and you put all of that together in your mouth. It's just an explosion of flavor. You have the spiciness, you have the nice sort of pad thai, flavor in there and you've got the freshness from the either onions, rocket or coriander the, to just balance out everything that's on this plate. Mm. You know how you have like an aglio olio with seafood or you know a shrimp aglio olio. That's good but man we should all just have sambal aglio olio from now on. Mm. So there's just too much. I'm trying to talk with my mouth full. My mom would be like, shut up, Susan! Sorry, mom. And aglio olio has this nice aromas from the garlic, but once you add sambal to it, goodness, you have aromas from the chili, from the onions, and the garlic that's inside the sambal already, and all comes together so well. With the patai too, it's a nice sort of crunch, yeah? Mm. This is absolutely delicious. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have sambal left over, please do try this dish. If you've got no more rice, instead of going cook a pot of rice, make some pasta, toss it all together, and enjoy a delicious, hearty meal. Mm. Mm. You get the patai coming through. Nice sort of fresh crunch, a little bit bitter. My girlfriend's gonna kill me when I get home. Because I'm gonna stink up the toilet. Alright, that's done. Alright guys, I hope you've enjoyed the two repurposed recipes that we've shared with you today using common Ramadan leftovers. And if you think this video has added value to you, don't forget to click the like and subscribe button and do not forget the little bell as well. So you get a notification whenever a new video is out. Now, I've got my groceries delivered to me straight from Happy Fresh. So download the app and click the link on the description below to enjoy your first order incentives. I'll see you next time. Ciao. Man, I could eat this all day. Good Lord. Mm. So good.